Ford Explorer of the 5th generation, 2010-2019 years of release. Good day if you are wondering, is it worth buying a 5th generation Ford Explorer and what problems you may encounter during the operation, then you are at the right place. So, as a rule, when buying a car, the rigidity of the body is remembered at the last moment. But in the case of the Explorer, it was the lack of rigidity that became the main body problem. For example, if you open the trunk lid while hanging diagonally, then the electric drive will no longer be able to close it. This cute luggage opening is difficult to notice with the naked eye, but as soon as you drive on more or less serious off-road terrain, it becomes clear that the Explorer's body lacks rigidity. The Ford drivers were also inadequate when choosing a sealant for the joints of the roof. If water starts to get into the cabin, you will have to experimentally select a new suitable sealant and repaint the joints. The thin paintwork is another explorer's weakness. Despite the fact that this model is still quite fresh, many owners have already had to repaint the hood and doors. And worst of all, the repainting of damaged areas was not always carried out within the framework of the Ford warranty. For the future, it's better to protect the edge of the hood and the lower part of the doors from external influences with a transparent protective film. Other external shortcomings include rapidly dimming front optics. In addition, after 3-4 years of operation, the headlights start to fog up every now and then. To make matters worse, the Explorer's headlights are not efficient enough. Perhaps on well lit foreign roads, this drawback is not so noticeable, but in our conditions, Explorer's blindness has become a big problem. It's not surprising that on specialized forums conversations about how to improve low beam headlights stretched for dozens of pages. There are also claims to fog lights. They sweat, crack and sometimes even fly out of their seats. The Ford Explorer is one of the few crossovers to boast a full 7-seater cabin. The gallery can comfortably accommodate even medium-sized adults, but given the car's American origins, this huge crossover has never been positioned as a very prestigious vehicle by manufacturers, hence far from premium finishing materials. High mileage examples are also given away by scratched silver accents on the center console and unkept looking leather seats. On the other hand, the Fresh Explorer looks very nice inside. However, in the early years of the release of the Ford Explorer, beauty clearly prevailed over functionality. Using the sensors on the front panel was frankly inconvenient, and the Ford Sync 2 multimedia system, built on the basis of the Windows operating system, annoyed the owners with an illogical menu and extreme thoughtfulness. Not surprisingly, Ford got rid of the touch buttons without waiting for the 2015 restyling. The multimedia complex was also promptly replaced. The Sync 3 system also cannot be considered ideal, but the slowdowns during work did indeed become noticeably less. There are quite a lot of electronics in Explorer, but so far there are practically no complaints about it, unless sometimes the rear view camera fails, which can either distort the image or turn off altogether. The most common Explorer engine is the 3.5 liter petrol 6. The peculiarity of this engine is distributed injection phase shifters at the inlet and outlet and an aluminum cylinder block. A mileage of 500,000 km before the first overhaul is a common thing for this power unit. The interval for replacing the timing chain drive is also impressive, at least 200 to 150,000 km. But if suddenly a metallic ringing is heard when starting the engine, the gas distribution mechanism will have to be serviced earlier. Fortunately, only one chain tensioner needs to be changed. Usually, the tensioner is abandoned after a run of 100-120,000 km. By the mark of 150,000 km, the pump of the cooling system should be preventively replaced. The fact is that the pump on a 3.5-liter engine is driven by a timing chain. Thus, the pump is a kind of intermediate gear. When the pump bearings wear too much, the gear starts to float, which is fraught with the pistons meeting the valves. At the same time, the cylinder head will also have to be repaired. By the way, Ford officially allows the use of 90-second gasoline, but practice has shown that 95th gasoline is still preferable for a 3.5-liter engine. Plugs and coils when using it last much longer, and nozzles and choke become dirty more slowly. The Explorer Sport has a 6-cylinder EcoBoost engine with twin turbochargers under the hood. Ford assures that this power unit will calmly withstand a mileage of 240 to 150,000 km. However, American motorists immediately proved in the first years of sales of the Sport version that not everything is so cloudless. 
on some cars speeding along country roads at maximum speed, the engine suddenly wedges. It turned out that it was all about condensation, which could accumulate in the intercooler. Under certain conditions, condensate can get inside the cylinder, which leads to dire consequences. However, such cases were isolated. We have nowhere to accelerate to maximum speed. And there are not many turbocharged versions of Explorer in our secondary market. At best, the sport version accounted for no more than 5% of all crossover sales. The 6-speed automatic transmission for the Explorer model was developed by Ford in conjunction with specialists from the General Motors company. When working with a naturally aspirated engine, automatic can be considered almost eternal. The first problems with this box begin when the bushing seal rings wear out. Usually the problem is caused by dirty transmission oil. In addition, old oil quickly destroys the solenoids, so in no case should you forget about changing the oil every 60-80 thousand kilometers. Drivers who in principle do not practice an aggressive driving style can carry out oil service every 80-100 thousand kilometers. By the way, the branded Ford Motorcraft Mercon 5 oil is relatively expensive. With a complete replacement, it will require about 9 liters. On the turbocharged version of Explorer, the resource of the same machine is, for obvious reasons, lower. But it's not necessary to talk about too fast a failure in this case either. And all because the design of the automatic transmission was initially very successful. In addition, in 2012, Ford eliminated the shortcomings that had accumulated by this time, after which the box became even more reliable. The fifth generation Ford Explorer got rid of the frame, structure, the transfer case and the interwheel differential locks. From now on, on the off-road, only the electronics that control the brakes had to help. The driver had to determine the type of road surface by eye and then using the washer on the transmission tunnel, select the appropriate mode. By the way, a similar system appeared at that time on Land Rover vehicles. Except for the Explorer as a true SUV, there will be no complaints about the electronically controlled all-wheel drive system. The main thing is not to believe the official documentation, which says that the oil in the transfer case is designed for the entire life of the car. Club service mechanics strongly recommend changing the oil every 40-50 thousand kilometers. At the same time, even on the new Explorer, the oil level was often not correct. It turned out that at the plant in Yelabuga, the level of the port oil was practically not monitored in any way. The owners have mixed feelings about the Ford Explorer suspension. On the one hand, it will require serious financial investments no earlier than 150,000 kilometers. On the other hand, the A-pillar support bearings and anti-roll bar bushings will have to be changed very often. On our roads, they serve about 50,000 kilometers. Anti-roll bar struts can even last only 30,000 kilometers. Ball joints and front shock absorbers can withstand about 100 120,000 kilometers on average. The steering rods will have to be changed every 50,000 kilometers. A much more serious problem is the rusting structure of the steering rack. Moisture and dirt enters the mechanism through the anthers, after which the rail begins to rust rapidly. However, it's quite simple to protect the rail from corrosion. It's enough to fill the anthers with grease and replace the standard clamps with the new ones. But it's worth remembering that such improvements are not favored by official Ford dealers. It's better to deal with them on those cars that have already rolled back the warranty period. On brand new Explorer, it's much easier to change the rail under warranty. Brakes are also not the Explorer's strong suit. For a huge crossover, they turned out to be too weak. Some drivers who prefer an active driving style wear out the brake pads literally 10-15 thousand kilometers away. Brake discs in this mode withstood 25-30 thousand kilometers. In 2019, another scene of the Ford Explorer became known. Cars sold from 2012 to 2018 had to make an unscheduled service visit to replace the rear tow levers. Cracks could have formed in the original levers, which could lead to serious accidents. Of course, before the lever finally cracks, the owners must surely feel a serious change in the car's behavior, but the Fords wisely decided not to risk it and arranged a large-scale recall campaign. The obvious advantages of the Ford Explorer are the spacious 7-seater interior, an excellent naturally aspirated engine, and an internal automatic transmission. The obvious disadvantages are far from a premium interior steering and body questions. But given the attractive price tag for the car, the downsides don't seem to be all that serious. Moreover, only the Kia Sorento Prime can compete with the Explorer in terms of the price-to-size ratio of the car. 
Toyota Highlander can also be included in the list of competitors, but all other things being equal, a crossover from Japan will cost much more. If you are the owner, then be sure to leave a comment about this car. Your review will definitely help others with the choice of a car.